Hey guys, Jake Noaker here at Droog's MMA in Pottstown, not with one of our teammates, but Ryan Kafaro stopped in today for a Muay Thai seminar ahead of his title fight. So let's start with the seminar. How do you like Droog's? How was the seminar? Uh, man, I, I really like this gym. It's really cool. You guys have pretty much everything, massive mat space. Uh, most importantly, it's clean. It's very clean. I hate gross, disgusting gyms. Um, and you guys just have a really, really solid team here. Uh, the facility is beautiful, you know, except for Dan O'Neill. Yeah, but Dan O'Neill. You know the deal. Um, just, uh, it's a beautiful place. I competed in uh, arena grappling here against yep. uh, Zach Radigan, and um, I didn't do very well. But the point is that I've been here before. I love this place, and that's that's where we talked about getting the seminar going here. So well, that's how well, it all came together. Thank you for coming. Had a great time at the seminar. If you guys need someone to teach you Muay Thai or MMA, that's your guy. Anyways. Art of War 31, my man, mm -hmm. September 15th, Valley Forge Casino. Matt Turnbull, before I ask you about Matt, is this like the Battle of Philadelphia? Are you looking at it like that? No, because I lived in Philly for five years, and then I, but I've been a Jersey guy my whole life. Right. So I was born and raised in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and then um, I moved back to, uh, I moved to Penn Sauk in a, uh, a year ago. So if anything, this is Jersey versus Philly, the way that it usually is Jersey versus Philly when I you know, compete against Philly guys, which I, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of just because I've trained with so many of them. Sure. But um, I haven't trained with Matt since he was like an 0 0 amateur. Wow. So this, this doesn't really mean, it's not like, you know, oh, I sported you last week. Right. It's kind of just like we're, we're just around the same group of people and stuff, um, uh, similar training partners and things like that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all business. And what are your thoughts on Matt? Like, how, how did this fight come to be? Because I know you were just with Cage Fury, yeah. and now you're fighting for the Art of War title. So um, I wanted to fight Jose Perez for the CFFC title. Would have been a good one. Yes. Um, unfortunately, he had an issue with cutting weight, which kind of messed up the scheduling because I wanted to fight him in like October at the latest or maybe even September. Yeah. But then with his fight being rescheduled to September 1st or 2nd, I can't continue to wait around. Right. And then um, Matt Turnbull was supposed to, I believe, fight Sean Stefanelli. Sean Stefanelli got the call up to the PFL. And then Mike Bickings asked me, he's like, what do you think of fighting Matt Turnbull? And right. I was like, hmm, hmm. I, you know, I was on the fence about it, and he was like, well, he, him and his team accepted it immediately. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. Then I have so, to. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, out of principle of it, if they have no, if there's no love lost there or whatever, you know, and if it's just strictly business, and I'm not here to, like, start beef with, uh, you know, Martinez BJJ. We're just here to compete for the number one spot in the region and hopefully a shot to the next stage. And to win that belt, man, what would that mean to you personally? It would mean a lot. Um, I have fallen short in two title fights. I fell short against Scott Heckman for the um, Maverick title. I fell short against Tim Dooling for the Ring of Combat title. So this is kind of like third time's a charm sort of thing. And uh, I feel like, you know, those two losses in particular have really helped me evolve as a fighter. And I think that I'm coming into this fight now as instead of the, the young and hungry up and comer, I'm the, the grizzled veteran, but I'm still, I still feel young and hungry, if that makes sense. So I feel like I have the best of both worlds leading into this title fight, as opposed to just, you know, being inexperienced and young. I, I now have experience, but I still feel young. I still look young. I move young. So. And it's no secret you had to take some time off, a, a year and a half, almost two years. Are you looking after this fight to make up for some lost time and get another fight in 2023? Absolutely. So my goal is I want to fight this fight in September, maybe fight October or early November. And then I believe I heard a rumor that there's a UFC in Atlantic City in December. That's the rumor. And if that is the case, then I want to be prepared for, for that to jump in on short notice. You know, you look at guys like uh, my friend Dennis Bujuki. Yep. He just went in on short notice on three days notice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's been disciplined year round. Um, he was ready to rock on three days' notice, and I feel like after this fight, I'll be in that position and be ready to rock 24-7, 365. And for this fight, you're, uh, I know you kind of jump around, like even you're today at Droogs, but your main gym, TKO Fitness, who do you train with? How's, uh, how's the how's so, camp? So I train at TKO Fitness, and then I also train at Nick Catone MMA. Right. Um, my main training partners, I work with um, Billy Markle out of Catone. I work with uh, Mark Gray, who's mm -hmm. my wrestling coach, and I'm his striking coach. I'm actually cornering him tonight in Maverick where he is looking to go 6-0. Yeah. Um, I actually work with uh, Malik Kamara in uh, Delco MMA mm. out there, and then uh, I work with him, and he works with the Algeo guys, so I work with the Algeo guys as well. I'm, I'm all over the place. And then recently I've been going to Marquez MMA to work with you know John Marquez and all the UFC guys over there. So it's just been like, uh, at this point, I, I'm not really like in one place, but I just kind of go where I need to go and take the things I need from these certain gyms. And then also uh, in this camp, I've incorporated working with uh, Jeff Knapp out of uh, Black Sheep MMA and uh, Black Sheep Striking. And he's been um, a real game changer in being cerebral and setting things up and uh, how I'm gonna apply my striking and being crafty in this fight. 
So you have the full arsenal backing you up. A lot of talent you just named. And like you said, Mark Gray, you're going right from here to corner him. So is the Hunter getting it done tonight? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a non-hesitant answer there, but I, I agree. Mark Gray is an absolute stud. Yeah. Ryan, before I get you out of here, man, again, thank you for the interview. Thank you for the seminar. But I got to ask my journalistic question for the fans. What's the prediction? Uh, prediction is uh, late third round stoppage. Um, Matt Turnbull said he wants to get me out in the first round. I honestly take a little bit of offense to that, seeing as he's, as far as I know, I think he's only finished one person as a pro in the first round. Um, and I've been finished once in the first round in my second amateur fight ever, and then after that, never again. So um, it just, statistically, it doesn't make sense to me to say that. And I think that Matt is durable, he's tough, he can take a beating, and I'm gonna provide one. Well, you're, at, you're fighting at a casino, so put them bets on the third round TKO. Ryan Cafaro, September 15th, Art of War 31. He's getting that strap. Thank, Thank you, you, my man. Good luck, all Thanks right? Thanks for having me.